Uh, this morning, well not this morning, <laughs> this afternoon, we're sailing from St. George's Bay around the corner to Prickly Bay in Grenada. For a couple of reasons, mostly because we are hoping to get some work done on our boat while we're here. Prickly Bay is going to be the best spot to do it. They've got um, Budget Marine and a sail loft and a rigger and it's close to a couple of hardware stores. Call that a successful anchoring mission. Done. <laughs> the first project on the list was to fix the spinnaker pole. The cables were old and worn out, and some were even broken entirely. So, our project for the day was to replace them with new Dyneema line. Please. Is that how long is it gonna take you? <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> Team effort. This protects the flame from the wind, otherwise, it just goes off. <laughs> so, normally, you would uh, get a fid appropriate for the size rope that you're using but since we don't have a fit we found out that this little pencil case works just fine so we're just gonna tuck it in there and there you have it Which one's that? Like your third? That's fourth. Yeah, that's, that's my. This is my third one. Nice. It's my third one. And we got we have two more to go. Two more to go. Using Dyneema for the spinnaker pole, it's probably overkill given the incredible strength of this stuff. But it's always better to be stronger than too weak. Once all the necessary splicing repairs were made, the spinnaker rigging was stronger than ever and ready for some downwind sailing. That night, the local yacht club was organizing a cruiser's get-together, so we hopped in a fancy taxi and headed over for some live music, meet a few of our neighbors, and we heard there was even free face painting. As if splicing isn't difficult enough, um, this rope that I just ended up getting from the rigging supply shop is something I've never seen before. It has like an outer core like double braid, or an outer layer like double braid, but then the core is made up of like another braided strand with a whole bunch of single fibers on the inside of it, which is bizarre. Took me a while to figure out what it was. It's made by a German company, and it's called Cup Rope. Um, and the splicing technique for it is insane because the only information I can find on how to splice it is in German. <laughs> so I've had to go through and like Google Translate the directions, and they're very like terrible English once Google Translate takes hold of it. But luckily, there's like some basic sort of diagrams. So between the two. Uh, I think I'm slowly figuring it out, but it is not easy. <laughs> so what is the rope for? Uh, this is the new, our new topping lift, so that our boom doesn't fall down. We take our sail down, 
and also so that we can adjust it from like mid boom so that when we're running our topping lift isn't like banging around and hitting the back stay. Germans know how to make things very precisely and there's not much room for do-it-yourself fids in this splicing technique. <laughs> No, I should have gone in here and come out here rather than going here and come out here. <laughs> wow, so, so you did like the extra. Basically when this was done, it's going to be a loop like <laughs> that thing. <laughs> okay, um, not too late to go in reverse. I'm never doing it again. I didn't know that this was the kind of rope I was purchasing. Um, I just asked the guy for like double braid and this is what he gave me. Luckily it's only our topping lift and not like a halyard because it's really weirdly spliced. I don't even know if I follow the directions right. Some fellow cruisers on Facebook reached out to our request and are letting us borrow their sail right so that we can sew the sun cover back on our Jenny before we leave here. Um, now we have to figure out how to use it because they've never used it before and we've never used one before. And we also have to figure out if it's gonna run off of our little tiny 300 watt inverter. Yeah. Ooh, look at that beautiful thing. Yeah, so technically you can like, spin the thing by hand, but hopefully we won't have to do that. God, that thing's heavy. Old stitching's coming out. Because it is old. This sail was made in 2005. So this stitching's already, what is that, 12 years old? Which is pretty good. The rest of the sail's in really good condition because the guy never used them but it's gonna look a lot better if I take all the old stitching out first. It's gonna be a long project. I'm glad I don't have to do it by hand though. This sewing machine's amazing. Can't wait till we get our own. Man, you can see how dead this thread is. I'm just pulling, just ripping out the back that hasn't gotten any UV damage and it's just tearing right through all the front pieces that have been damaged by the sun. that's probably a little bit overkill that I don't think sail lofts do but I'm gonna do anyway is about every foot or so I'm gonna back stitch it once or twice so that if any part of the, the thread starts to um, chafe or blow through it won't like take all the thread with it it kind of it's kind of like a ripstop nylon I guess where it'll only rip out like a foot of it rather than all of it Well, that's it. I am finished sewing the head sail. Um, it was so easy and it went so smoothly. I even had time to patch up uh, two little holes and repair the luff at the head of the sail as well, which all needed a little bit of love. Um, so it's good. It's like as good as new. So far, I really like using the sail right. We don't even have our own yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get one as soon as we can get to somewhere where shipping is easy and cheap because that thing is a little beast. It sewed through just about everything on our Genoa, including um, some of the places at the top, which were probably six layers of sailcloth, two layers, four layers of sunbrella, and a couple layers of really thick nylon webbing. It, it sewed through them just fine. And where it had trouble, you could kind of spin the, um, the flywheel and it would go through no problem. Had a little bit of trouble with the zigzags and the really thick stuff, but uh, on straight stitch, it, it really went really, really well. So pretty excited to get our own and be able to tackle a bunch more sewing projects on the boat. But until then, I think we're pretty much set. Now all I have to do is uh, re-hoist the Jenny.
we can go sailing again. That's gonna be sweet. After spending about a week in Prickly Bay, we decided to sail back around to St. George's to visit an underwater sculpture park that we had heard about. This park consisted of several sculptures, each representing a specific cultural aspect of the island. Unfortunately, due to storms and bad weather, a lot of it has been damaged over time, but we still enjoyed swimming around the remaining sculptures. And that afternoon, we were ready to hoist our sails and finally head west, downwind to Bonaire. If it's that comfy the entire time, I could do some work. For the first time on Uma on a passage, I'll be able to open my computer. That does not happen ever. That's awesome. But yeah, so far it's nice. We're going at a four and a half, five knots. So it's kind of light, but I think once we're out of the leeway of the island, it'll pick up and we'll cruise for three days and five hours till we make our destination to Bonaire. And we're literally sailing into the sunset. Well, as terrible fishermen as we are, people keep giving us advice and tips. One of the most recent was to fish with blue and white squids and skirts because they look like flying fish. So far we've tried pink and green and orange and that didn't work, so we're going blue and white. Picked these up in Grenada and we're excited to try them. We got the expensive one and the cheap one and we'll see which one works better. Googly. So fancy, even has little googly eyes. We call it Google. Uh, Google, all right. This is Google, bye Google. Geronimo. Alright guys, we have been holding this bottle of champagne since we left Fort Pierce two years ago. And for this exact moment, we're are sailing into west. the sunset, we're finally sailing west. It's all downhill from here. Yeah. And so it's time to pop this bad boy. Gong. And a little to Neptune, of course. <laughs> that is so ridiculous. Ah. Now that's a sundowner. Yeah. Oh, and the champagne's cold because we have a refrigerator. So it's chilled champagne <laughs> sailing into the sunset. Perfectly calm conditions. This is fantastic. And a beautiful, beautiful sunset, by the way. As always, thanks for watching this step. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss next week's when we enjoy a perfect day with the spinnaker up, finally catch a fish, and arrive in Bonaire at night. But until then, cheers. For those of you wondering, no, we're not sailing drunk. We're not finishing this bottle. We're only celebrating with a glass. Just one glass? <laughs> Just one glass, that's enough. <laughs>